Okay, so we're going over force, um, processing what looks like chaos in the moment and what the process of integrating force can look like, one of three things. And then I'm gonna go through the poop storm that happened this week, because it was really interesting. And there were so many gems that I wanna share with you. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do my best to do this in 10 minutes. So when a force hits the system, as I was saying, one, the, the system can either move into a state of chaos, independent of how long that state is, and then find a new, a new resonance with the new volume inside the system. That's thing one. Thing two is the system can reject the force. And thing through, three is the system can take the force and hold it for later for when it has time to process. So this is how I understand force dynamics when it comes to the body. Uh, this is how I understand subluxation if you're a chiropractor. Um, so let me give you an example. If I'm walking down the street, walking along, singing my song with my blue suede shoes, right? <laughs> like Pete the Cat, if you know the reference, and I fall, I trip, I fall, I hit my knee. If I'm feeling pretty funky and I'm like chill and my body is in a really good state, that force is probably going to move right through my system. I might go into a state of chaos for a few seconds and then I gotta get up, I brush it off and I move on and I move about my day with a new expression of force dynamics in my body. That's thing one. Thing two is I fall, my body cannot accept the force and I might even hurt the sidewalk. <laughs> or maybe I fall on a patch of ice and I shatter the ice and that's where the force is distributed, not so much in my body. Thing three is I fall and my, I, I grab my breath and I freeze up and there's a soreness that starts to build. I don't release it, I hold on to it. And then all of a sudden I have knee issues and then I have ankle issues and then my hip starts to bothering me and it starts bothering me. And then a year later, my lower back has chronic stuff going on. So in my understanding, when a force hits a system, those are the three options. So here's another thing to understand. So those are, those are two things to understand. The third thing to understand is the first thing was everybody's doing the best they know how to do. The second thing is there are options when a force hits the system. The third thing is my tendency is to hold my breath and say, oh shit, what's gonna happen next? What if this means, what if that means when a force hits my system? Whether it's an emotional force, a physical force or a chemical force, those are the three types of forces that I'm talking about. And then the fourth thing I want us to understand is we usually know it when a force is coming. We usually feel it, there's some kind of inkling. It's the same knowing when your kid gets off the school bus and you know just by looking at them whether or not they had a good day or if it's time to bust out the milk and cookies. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so over the past couple of weeks, I'm dropping one-liners to my right hand, who's just the most lovely person on the planet. I Godspeed, I think she's incredible. And I would hear myself say things like, you're good, right? You're you're not too overwhelmed. You feel like you got things like, where are you at? What's happening? Give me your status. When I hear myself saying stuff like that, that needs to be an indication for me that a force is coming, that some kind of a change needs either needs to happen or is about to happen. Because every time I've looked back, whether it's been in practice, in my marriage, which is really the most amazing relationship in my life, with my kids, with my mother, whoever it is, with my body, if I start asking questions and curiosity starts to percolate, there's a force coming. I hope that you guys can identify with that. And I do wanna follow along in the comments to see if anybody's having questions for me because this is some deep stuff. So I'm asking the question, I'm asking the question, I'm wondering, I'm hearing myself ask the question and I'm wondering in the back, I hear the voice, there's like a voice in the back and I'm hearing myself say, something's up, Jode, something's up. And the force hit last Monday when I had a conversation with my right hand and she said, I took a full-time position that I just couldn't say no to. And it was like, it was like my head went through a windshield. That's what it felt like. Like it was such a big force. It was 
it was a pinnacle of force all at once that hit and it felt like my body, my emotional body, my physical body was accepting it. But there was a part of me that was saying, this is happening again. I can't believe, I can't believe I put myself in this situation. Why is this happening to me? What is this going to mean? I immediately went into that state of chaos. So it became a potential force in my system. And I cried and I called my best friend and I did all of these things. And really a, a very wise part of me knows this is a brilliant woman who is so possible, so capable of doing so much good in the world. And she's working for me as a part-time virtual assistant. However, I gave her so much responsibility, right? This is me walking my walk, walking my talk, talking my walk, that I didn't even know what I didn't know. That was the fear that I was feeling. I don't even know what this means. I don't even know what I don't know. And then it goes deep breath, Jody. <sighs> let the force integrate, let the force process. That to me is the adjustment for the chiropractors who are listening. The force is integrating, the force is processing. And I have to thank my dear friend who's no longer in the physical plane, Dr. Sue Brown, for teaching me this about chiropractic and force dynamics. Okay, so at one point, maybe a couple of hours after the information was received, I was, I was actually walking to the boardwalk to get onto the beach with my son when that information hit my phone. The information hit my phone and hit my eardrum. It went in and it got stuck somewhere around here. And then it went and it got stuck like right below my diaphragm. And I was processing and processing and processing. And part of me was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. I'm so excited to see what's next. Part of me was like, like, I can't do this. I can't go through this again. And part of me was like pissed. Part of me was excited. I felt all of it at the same time. It was a complete volcano eruption. Okay. And then I went and sat on the beach and I let it process and I let it percolate and I let it process. And I felt my body coming to a calm state and I started to feel bubbling in my stomach. Okay let it process, let it percolate. And then I, I was able to calm down after talking to my people and letting it all process. This means that my go-to person, this is where I was going, my go-to person, my right hand, who's helping me hold up the school, the books, the client, the practice, the all of it, the teachings, the lead by example, the all of it, right? This means it's all going to come tumbling down. And that's what I'm telling myself while I'm stuffing my face with skinny pop. Okay, then here's what happened. The practical part of me, there's like a whole debate society, right? The practical part of me goes home when I could catch my breath, when I, this was like 24 hours later and we had cleaned up the conversation and she said, Godspeed. And I said, Godspeed. And we wish each other the very best. And I actually took a bird's eye view on all of the things that she was doing for me. And here was the aha moment. She had been working for me for the past two and a half years and really amazing, really gentle force in my life, really giving me space to mentally process and build this thing that is now known as Staffless Practice Academy. My two books, my third one, which is about to come out, which you guys are going to love. And I didn't know what I didn't know because her plate was one of the plates that I just didn't look at. And when I finally took a look at it after receiving that force and coming to a state of balance, I realized that more than 80% of what she was doing for me can be automated. So I got to work. And this is exactly what I did when I automated my practice, when my front desk person who had worked for me for years <laughs> said to me, it's time for me to move on for many different reasons state of chaos, came to settle, figured out the systems, created the school. Now what's happening is all of my systems that my right hand was doing for me have become automated. I even had a conversation with my bookkeeper the morning of saying to her, I might need you to take some of this person's jobs. I just have a feeling I need to lighten her load. And this is honestly before I had the conversation with my right hand. And then I had a conversation yesterday with my bookkeeper and I said, you know what? I automated all of her jobs. So here's my, here's my golden nugget for you. 
I will please learn from what I've learned. My golden nugget is that A, if you do have a team, have regular check-ins that work for you and your brain and them for and their brain to make sure that what they're doing is the best use of their time, the best use of their talents, and have somebody call you on it if you're not seeing through your own stuff. Because that's what happens to me, right? The second thing is look around at all of the things that you and your team members are currently doing and figure out what can be automated without being cheesy, okay? I'm talking about things like when a student pays for a coaching program, she was taking that money and putting it on a spreadsheet so that we had a tally. That can be automated with a program called Zapier right? It doesn't take a human being to do. I'm not talking about reaching out to a potential student who wants to connect with me. That can't be automated. That takes heart to heart. I'm talking more about the details of running the business. Do the bird's eye view, look around and figure out what can be automated, what can't be. And if you do have team members, Godspeed to you, right? Um, I still have four part-time virtual assistants. And don't you know that I'm going to be studying everything that they're doing and taking a relook, taking an inventory and reorganizing and making sure the things that they're doing really need to be done. It's really cool, you guys. The coolest thing is that I think about the time and money and energy that will be realized from this what felt like a catastrophe in the moment but is really a gift and the coolest part about it is somebody that I care very deeply about which is my right hand is going and living her bliss she's realizing what she wants to be realizing it's cool and it really really works every day just about every day I get either a Marco Polo or a text or some kind of a video from a client of mine, whether it's somebody who I'm doing private coaching with or somebody walking through my 12 week program and they're celebrating and they're saying, I just did it. I just booked my first patient and I didn't talk to her. She texted me and I sent her to the link and the link got her all paid and got her paperwork and she's good to go. And when I hear stuff like that, a, I get it because I have been the person who felt like they had to do every single solitary thing and B, the celebration that I feel in my physiology when I see a student get it. Oh my God, it's everything you guys, because the bottom line is at the end of the day, what we want to be doing is we want to free the energy, the time, the money. We want to free all of that stuff so that it's not getting in our way so that when this is so important. Please hear me say this. When I was feeling the itch and that something was up, that was a distraction for me. It was anything that is a distraction from being used by universal as a channel to create healing and wellness and good on the planet. I don't mean to sound like, um, I know that I've got a lot of work to do, but I also know that I was put on this planet for a purpose. I'm very clear on that. When I'm busy with the tapes, like, am I doing this right? Is she still happy? Am I paying her enough? Like all of that stuff, it's a distraction from what I really need to be doing, which is what I'm doing exactly right now. Connecting with you guys so that you can get out of your own way, so that you can realize systems that work for you, so that you can truly give great care so that there's nothing in the way. Whew, it's so fun, it's so cool. You don't need to know that the little twirl in my stomach that I felt on the beach turned into like quite the storm and I have not left my house in four days. I've just been processing and feeling and crying and clearing and cleaning and writing and uh, new ideas coming to me, new lessons to teach my students. Um, I'm gonna tell you about one of them and then I'm gonna go. I stole my husband's mug. <laughs> He's a dog dad. So um, here's what happens. People want to create something big, right? They want to create something big and we need to break things down in bite-sized pieces. And this is what we call three stages. And 
when I'm, when I do give myself the break to lay in bed for a couple of days, to watch movies, to cuddle with my puppy, to drink fluids, to really just give every part of me a break, which is what just happened. Um, the channel starts to clear and I start getting more information. I start getting more to share and three stages is my newest thing. So if you're one of my students, look inside of Staffless Practice Academy for three stages. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to share. If here's, here's my heart offering to you. If what I'm saying to you resonates and if you feel like you need support figuring this shit out, please either drop a comment, yes, in the comments below, or if you're watching the recording of this, reach out to me and let's jump on the phone and let me listen. That's all I want to do is listen. And if I can't help, I'll tell you. And if I can, I'll let you know. I'm loving you guys from here. I'm very grateful for your time. I know you could be doing anything right now. And the fact that you're listening to me means everything to me. I'll talk to you soon.